Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. My name is Gabby and today we're going to talk about building uh, the D6 DAC. I'm going to show you step by step how to build this DAC from the beginning to the end. So this is a live build, so you're going to see it live and you're going to see how I build it very quickly. Yes, it's a DAC, not a streamer this time. This is based on Ian Canada's beautiful work. Don't get fooled by the simplicity of this DAC. Yes, it is not cheap, but it's not expensive. Probably you can build this roughly around $600, but this DAC will rival products in the five to $6,000 range. All right, so what you need, all the parts will be in the description below. First, a pure pie. This is probably the best bang for your money. This board will actually take your five volt and charges a battery underneath here and also have some ultra capacitor. You're gonna get the best power supply possible in a five volt and a 3.3 volt. The five volt will be for your Raspberry Pi and the 3.3 volt is gonna power the FIFO Pi and the DAC. Then you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. It could be anything like a 3B or 4B. It doesn't matter. 3B may be preferable. It's a little bit cheaper and works as good, if not better. You will need some metal pieces to make shields. Uh, I'm using copper, but it does not have to be covered. It could be just a cover of a tin lid or anything uh, inexpensive. Uh, then the brain of the system actually will be the FIFO Q7. This is going to reclock the signal. Uh, so the signal that's coming from the Raspberry Pi, we consider it not that great. It's like a computer base and it's got very lots of noise. It does not have a clock on it. So this is going to take that signal and clock it. And also it's going to isolate the signal and keep it as pure and jitter-free as possible. You can either keep the clocks that comes with the board, that's the least ex uh, expensive way, or you can upgrade to like a AcuSilicon or a Kristak, or in this case, I'm using the fancy in Canada SC Pure Clocks. Next, you're gonna need a monitor Pi, and this is going to basically display the signal and has a volume control. Not that we want to use a volume control, but it's going to display and you can actually control uh, some of the functions of the DAC with this and also visualize what's happening. On top of that, this is what we have the DAC itself. This is the uh, Dual Mono version 2. Uh, just happened to have a copy of it for a couple of weeks now, thanks to Ian. Uh, this is going to be released fairly, fairly soon. Uh, it does sound a tiny little bit better, and it's got a nicer layout for all the components and also how you hook, it, how you hook the power supply to it. And there's two chips in here, so one for the left channel and one for the right channel, and that's why we call them dual mono DAC. And because each chip has a, a stereo, we can basically create a, a balanced output, a, a true balanced output, because now you have four DACs running the show. And then the very last, we have the OPA 861. This is basically the output board that's going to output the sound to the output at the end. And this one has a balanced output and also have an RCA output. You also need some 40 pin extensions. Uh, there's one here and uh, there's another one here that's going to go on the FIFO Q7. You will need a little board, could be a little uh, basically cutting board. You can buy those off the dollar store. And you can also see my other video where I built, the, added the screen to the system. So I'm not going to through, go through it in this video to keep it a little bit short. So I'll put a link in the top here and also in the description where you can get that video. You will need a bunch of standoffs, basically they're little metal, uh, little pillars so you can build the blocks on them. Uh, you could use either metal or plastic. I'll be using a combination of those. You can buy a box of these, they're pretty cheap. I'll put links for those. You can get those off Amazon uh, very easily. You can get a whole box of them. And for power, we're going to use, uh, if you want to keep things simple, and remember that we're doing this DAC as the best DAC possible using simple methods. I suggest to use three of those iFi power supplies. These are uh, basically rated for five volts. 
So one is going to power the uh, pure pi, and uh, the other two are going to power the uh, output board, the OPA861. And I'll show you how to connect those uh, because there's a special way to do a plus five and a minus five. And that will power everything uh, that you need. Now from here you can get fancy if you want later on in life and start uh, individualizing power supplies, but you have lots of time to tinker with that. So I would suggest start with this and go from there. Because the sound quality of the system is pretty amazing as it is. So you really, uh, yes you can add things and you're going to improve tiny bits, but the value is all here. We're keeping it simple. I'm going to speed up this uh, process very fast so I don't bore you, but I'm going to put this clip in its regular speed at the end of this video. All right, let's build this. Don't get fooled by the simplicity of this DAC. Yes, it is not cheap, but it's not expensive. Probably you can build this roughly around $600, but this DAC will rival products in the five to $6,000 range. So not only you learn some electronics and some beautiful things and how to build things yourself, you're gonna have the pride of ownership. And at the end, you're gonna feel and hear mostly how this DAC sounds. And a lot of you are wondering, how does this DAC sound compared to, let's say, if you go and spend uh, the money and buy a different DAC. Uh, by the way, it costs roughly around $600 to build this DAC with the original clocks. And if you want to upgrade the clocks, you got to spend at least uh, somewhere between $100 to $400 to upgrade the clocks. Uh, but the clocks that come with the uh, 5 for q 7 uh, the, are really, really good actually. So don't underestimate those. I really, uh, I strongly suggest you listen to those first and uh, before you go and start up upgrading your system. Upgrades are nice and yes, you'll hear differences and there's some really, uh, the sound will improve. But uh, the way this DAC is put together right now, it's you get the best bang for your buck. And this DAC can basically rival DACs in the thousands of dollars that you can pick up off the market. And on top of that, you're gonna enjoy building something for yourself the way you like it. And you might like to put it in a different case and start upgrading it later and putting it in a nicer setup. Or you might just like to keep it simple, just like that. So it depends on what you like. You can also upgrade the power supplies uh, from the iFi to, so for example, you can put some UC Pure power supply, the big uh, ultra capacitors. But again, there's some danger into those. You've got to be careful and know what you're doing. Or you could use some, uh, Ian kind of has some nice linear Pi boards that you can also use, and they provide some really nice power. But I try to keep the system simple, cost effective, and it still sounds great. I ran some statistics on my channel. It shows like 80% of you are not actually subscribed, yet you watch my videos. So if you are one of those, please consider subscribing. It really will help my channel grow uh, to a next level. And that would be very, very appreciated. So on the cutting board, you're gonna drill four holes, put a couple four standoffs and mount your pure pie on top. And you're gonna need about four six millimeter high standoffs. You're gonna put those on the bottom here and you are going to put your uh, Raspberry Pi on top. And uh, this has a little spring, so you may have to basically add the uh, little standoffs. So the next standoffs we're gonna use are uh, 18 millimeters. So you can either get an 18 millimeter one or just get a combination of an 18 millimeter. Uh, we run the, uh, the screen. I'm gonna put that in here, because once we put that, it'll be very hard to put that thing in. So we'll put that in here, and we're gonna lock that. And uh, next, we're also going to put in the power supply 
just for the 3.3 .3 volt. You don't need to worry about the 5 volt, this automatically goes through the pins here, but the 3.3 .3 volt, you need to do that. And we have two boards that use the 3.3 .3 volt, the DAC, and uh, also the FIFO Pi. So I'm just going to turn this around a little bit here. So, so this is a live build, so I'm doing it in front of you, so you're going to see everything. It's very important to make sure plus and minus are respected. One mistake here, and you're going to blow up a board that's cost a couple hundred dollars. So it's very important not to mess this up. So I got the uh, two wires here, one for the DAC and one for the FIFO. Q7. So we're just going to turn this around again. Now that we have the powers connected, the next thing we're going to put uh, the shield and we already have the screen connected. So now the shield goes on and then we are going to, then we're going to put four 11 millimeter high standoffs. And on top of that, it's going to go the 54Q7. Make sure you plug in the master clock uh, cable. It comes with the uh, 54Q7. And we are going to make sure this is connected properly. Now you're going to add another 40 pin GPIO extension. That I've already added here. And put four uh, standoffs of 28 millimeters. If you don't have the right size and one, just do a combination of two of them. Don't forget after you put in the dual mono DAC to plug in the uh, cable from the master clock of the 54Q7 to here. There you go, got a click here. And then we're going to put in the uh, OPA861. There she goes, and then we're going to put in four more standoffs. These are 25 millimeter standoffs. And, and on the very top, I'm going to use this plastic little cover. It's not important, this is just purely cosmetic, but Ian sells those. I uh, don't have to buy them, but you know, it does make the product nicely finished, so it's not a bad idea. So this is, uh, there are three wires here, there's a plus, zero and a minus, we'll go into this in a bit. And uh, let's just go through the grounding, so there's a star grounding system here, there's one little bolt, and from here we get ground to the actual Raspberry Pi, basically the casing of the Raspberry Pi. Next one is for the shield. And the third one is for the uh, shield behind the monitor Pi Pro here. The screen is shielded via the uh, flex cord, flex cable back here. And so that's basically it. This is, uh, it's all finished. As you notice, it did not take that much time. And it's really, really simple. Anyone can do it. I wanted to do it live so you can see every step I'm making and see how fast we can build something like that. To power the system, I suggest at the beginning to get three i5 power supplies. Uh, the reason I'm using those, yes, they are switching power supply, but they're very, very low ripple. I did a little testing on video on them. I'll put a link in the description below about it on the top. And just to, to show you that they are actually pretty good. You know, they're not exceptional, but they're very, very good and uh, you can later on upgrade and do things differently. And for the OPA861, you're going to get yourself two of these uh, adapters and that's going to make your life so easy. I'll put a link of those in the description below. Uh, you can easily get them off Amazon. And why it's going to be so easy? Because the i5 will plug right into these, so you don't have to MacGyver the wire in case you want to use them later for something else. And from here, I suggest you shorten though. You don't need to, the shorter the wire, the better, so just give it a little bit here and then 
uh, get yourself the two positive and negative. So what are you going to do here? You're going to plug in your second IFI right here. So now we have plus 5 volt, negative 5 volt, plus 5 volt, negative 5 volts. So what you want to do is you are going to connect one plus and one negative together. And that's going to be your center pole right here. And then that leaves you with a plus here and a negative here. It's pretty simple. Connect your plus and negative together. That gives you your zero. This is your plus five. This is your negative five. Do not mess it up. You'll fry it again. It's very important. So that's it. Really simple. There is no major, extremely dangerous products here. Yes, there's a couple of batteries and a couple of ultracapacitors, but you don't have to tinker with them too much. If you leave them alone, you should be fine. If you happen to like the videos, give them a thumbs up. I'll put a couple links in the corner here on different videos. One about uh, how I built the uh, D11 DAC, which is a, a bigger version of what I'm building here. And also uh, another corner, I'll put a, a link on 12 songs that you can listen to on your channel and that are very well recorded. Hope you like my channel. Take care and see you again.